All right. So I wanted to link sort of some of the problems in the computer field with some of the wider problems of the world, because that's kind of what I experiment with on this particular channel. And I guess like, some of these, <laughs> some things are really obvious in the world. If I were doing an interview for somebody for a job in computer programming, right? And it was a job about algorithms, either analysis, improvement, maintenance, or development, there's a simple question, right? And I would ask them, do you prefer Sedgwick or Tannenbaum? Now, there are other things and other ways to phrase that, obviously, like, yeah, I know that. If they came back with, we'll say, not Donald Knuth, right? Because also the most valid answer, but whatever. Um, and they came back with a name I did not know. But they could not go back to Tenenbaum and, and Sedgwick or Knuth. Look, I mean, they're not getting the job. Like, it's that simple. Why? Because there is an easy, simple way to understand competence in a field. And if you don't know the history of the field, you know, I mean, you don't have to go back to the fucking Middle Ages for F's sake. Like, that's not required. But, like, if you don't know, maybe no on the job. This isn't that hard. And people are really, really confused about simple things. Right? We have this, well, who's an expert? Man, if you can't ask an expert a question and tell if they're an expert, you're the idiot, not them. I, I'm, just, I'm sorry. Like, I'm just sorry about that. Not any random question, but there's always one question that you can ask an expert to determine their level of expertise. And sometimes it's not in the correctness of the answer, but in whether or not their response can be made sense to you. Because let me explain something to you. If I got a guy coming on my team, DevOps team, software team, whatever, doesn't matter, analysis team, okay? They got an idea and they can't express it to me. They might be right and I don't care because I got to work with them. And if I can't work with them, it could be lots of reasons. They could be wrong. That happens all the time to me. I work with people that are wrong. I can't work with them. It's fine, right? Could be that they're unclear, in which case we're just going to play the communication game all day, right? Or it could be that. They're not able to cooperate. They're clear. I understand what they're saying. They can't follow up and do the work. All fine. Same answer though, right? And so we, we get bogged down in the, well, well, why? It doesn't actually matter why. If the answer is they can't cooperate, does it matter they can't cooperate because they have no idea what they're talking about? Does it matter they can't cooperate because... They're, they're not good at getting their thoughts out. It doesn't matter they can't cooperate because they can't work. They might know all the stuff in their head. They might be right about all of it. But if you can't get work done, I, I don't know what difference that makes. So none of those things matter to whether or not they can work on the team. The answer is still no. It doesn't make a difference. And we keep asking these questions to determine the why. So why do we do that? Because we're trying to fix stuff. It's no use to fix. You can just accept the world, adopt the right attitude, and move on. You don't have to include everybody. You don't have to include anybody. Maybe you can't. That's okay. But we're not doing that. I don't know why. I have no idea why. But we're not doing that. It's really annoying. That's what we should be doing. We should be there. We should be able to say, oh, I don't know why we can't get this to work, but we can't get this to work. Okay. Bye. See ya. Don't let the door hit you on the way out. We don't do that. We don't do it with our political leaders. We don't do it with our experts. We don't do it with anybody. There's an easy question or an easy observation to, to make a decision about an action. You may not feel good about that action. It may not be a great action, 
but it might be necessary. I, I don't know why we're not there. I was responding to somebody on Twitter. And I said, you know, Objective-C is, is the best OO language, which is true, by the way. Um, and somebody mentioned Java. I don't like, you've got to be kidding me. Java is not even a good programming language, much less a good object-oriented language. The OO is horrific. Most of the sophisticated shops I worked at with Java immediately moved to spreadsheet templating. Why do you have a language that's so inefficient that you can remove boilerplate code by plugging stuff into a spreadsheet, having it auto-generate? It tells you something about your language. Like, what are you doing with the language, bro? What's going on? This isn't hard to know that Java's a garbage language. We've got containers now. Oh boy, we have containers with Java, dude. All Java apps running containers. I'm not interested. I get it. Like, whatever. I'm not a fan of containers. I don't have to be. You don't have to be. Also, what are you doing? This isn't new. What kind of drugs are you smoking? Share. That's all I'm saying. It's a problem. It's a big, big problem. We're so afraid to get out there and make determinations because we want to know why. I don't care why. Once I know for some reason you can't cooperate, I'm out. I don't waste my time. I'm not going to waste their time. What are we doing? Can you be too dismissive doing that? Probably. You're not perfect. You're not going to be perfect though. So it doesn't matter. You can be perfect and imperfect in some other way, I guess. I don't know why that solves the problem. It certainly doesn't. And the computer industry is full of this garbage. They don't know how to interview people. They don't know any of the tech they're using. They make basic... No one's testing anything. Oh my goodness. No one's testing anything. Nothing at all. I need to pick up my second pair of eyeglasses and drive down there because they never contacted me. My first pair got, I don't know, eight texts, two emails, maybe three. This one did a pair of glasses sitting there for I don't know how many days because I kept remembering and then going, oh, oh it's nine o'clock at night. I can't go over there now. I'll have to go over there tomorrow. And then I'd forget the next day and whatever. And I go get the damn glasses. I get home and then I get a text and an email that my order's ready. Yeah, they need to clear their system. Who tests this stuff? What's wrong with these people? What's going on? The problem with technology is you still got to do the basics. All the things you have to do without technology, actually. Irony of ironies. No one does them because they think technology should take care of it. Yeah, it doesn't. Technology requires constant checking and maintenance. Oops. You just changed the job. You didn't get rid of it. I mean, obviously I'm still a fan. I love automation. But also, what are you doing? I'd rather play the technology game than the boring not technology game. For sure. Obviously. I've got two computers in this room. Two external monitors on that laptop. One external monitor on that laptop. That's five screens. I love technology. I got a box of robot parts over there. I could build four robots. I love technology. But what are you doing? You still got to do the maintenance. You still got to check things. You still got to test everything all the time. It doesn't go away. You can automate some of that, but then you got to check your automation to make sure it's working. Did you? I don't think that you did. 